Welcome to the quick hitter version of Buckets, Boards, and Blocks. I'm Monica McNutt alongside my co-host Bruce Bernstein and for King McClure this week. This week, our featured guest is ESPN college basketball analyst Chris Spatola, who goes in depth on why Gonzaga deserves to be ranked number one. We had Gonzaga West Virginia last night. I don't know about you, Chris, but when Jalen Suggs went out and then came back in, I was like, somebody get him off the floor. But Mark Few, Gonzaga, uh, very, very talented team this year, and it looks like Suggs is going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's a football player, so it's in the DNA to come back, but I'm with you. Like, what are we doing here? And they, they, they could have won that game without him, especially with how Andrew Nemhard played. Uh, I, I think it's Mark Few's deepest team, and that's saying a lot because he's had really good teams. That team in 2016 was very deep, but I, I think this is his deepest team. They go two to three deep at every position. They have post scoring. They have perimeter shooting. They have guards like Suggs who can get into the paint and take you off the dribble. Uh, they're incredibly hard to guard and defend. They're always good offensively, but I, I think this year, too, they, they're going to get after you a little bit defensively as well. Uh, they're loaded, and they are – although Baylor looked pretty good last night against Illinois, so I don't want to close – I don't want to necessarily separate too much, but I, I think the separation between Gonzaga and the rest of the field right now is, is, is pretty wide. Mm, okay. You know, you mentioned Mark Few, who – to me, is like eternally youthful looking. Yet he picked up his 600th win last week against Kansas. So is this the team? Is this the Gonzaga team that's going to win it all finally? He's been knocking on the door yeah. for quite some time. Yeah, to me, they're the favorites. Um, you know, and it's interesting you, you mentioned the asterisk on the Michigan State win, which is crazy. Um, I, I wonder how, you, you know, it's kind of like in the NBA, like, like obviously – LeBron winning there, it's going to create debate no matter what happens. But, mm -hmm. you know, how we evaluate historically that championship, I think will be interesting about something like this. There's part of me that believes Gonzaga is going to win. They certainly, again, are the favorite to do it. But what shape by March? I mean, look at where we are right now with this virus and, and all that's going on. Where are we by March? What does the sport look like? Are we still playing the sport? And if we are, what shape and form does the, the NCAA tournament take? And then how does that impact um, not just Gonzaga's path to doing that, but, but ultimately how it's received historically? Uh, I, I want him to win uh, I, because I think it's – to me, it's, it's limiting to say, well, he never won a national championship, and so that puts a, 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 mark, a mark on somebody's career. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer and will be at some point. But you want him to win just so he does have that uh, because he's worthy of that. And obviously the program he's run. It's funny. He wins 600 games uh, appropriately, like you said, against Kansas, which is incredibly appropriate that Gonzaga and Mark Few gets a 600th against a program like Kansas, a blue blood. But it doesn't even scratch the surface of what he has done and created there at Gonzaga, it, it's, which is crazy because 600 wins is a lot of wins. Yeah, uh, 600 wins. That's, I, and you know what? It's funny because just in the big basketball conversation, I'm always mindful, of course, in the analyst chair, but even as a fan, to truly appreciate greatness, right? Like the great ones make it look easy, you know what I mean? But what they have poured into it, whether it's few in his 600 wins, the multiple titles LeBron has, any of the greats of the game, like it looks easy, but we really need to be respecting what they're accomplishing, like to the umpteenth degree. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we live in such a prisoner of the moment period yeah. here, and, and there's a lot of things that fuel that, social media being one of them. But it, it um, you know, these, and these debates are so confined because you're trying to have them in 140 characters or whatever it is on Twitter, or because we live in a, in a media space where it, it has to be so binary, like it, it's either one or the other. He's either the goat or he's not. Uh, there's very little nuance to, to that discussion. Um, you know, I think we learned more about LeBron James and some of the losses he, he suffered in the finals than we did in the wins. Uh, and, and I think that, unfortunately, that doesn't enter the conversation enough. Um, it's, it's incredible. I, I, it really is what he's done and, and what he's been able to do with, in some cases, very little. You know, again, I think it's some of the losses. When you look at the rosters he had in those, it, it's crazy. And so I – 
I think a lot of it gets to how we discuss winners and how we discuss winning and, and we put people in those categories. But uh, Mark Few, it, it, there's no question. Again, look at what he's done at Gonzaga. At Gonzaga, mm-hmm. he's got a team that is loaded. I mean loaded, so separated from the field in a world where it's just not built for that to happen. Like we live in a power five world in terms of the conferences, certainly in football, but it's that way in basketball. I mean, there are definitely the haves and the have nots. And and for him to build what he's built there is just, it's truly remarkable. Yeah, definitely. You know, I was, I was going to ask you because you, you, and you kind of touched on a little bit there. Gonzaga is located in Spokane, Washington, which is Eastern Washington state, almost into Idaho it can't be the easiest place to convince young guys to say, hey, come play up here in Spokane, Washington. Right. No, it's not. I, I don't know if you guys have been there. Uh, I don't know how they get the, the – I don't know how they get the recruits from the airport to the facility, you know, in some of those places in the state of Washington. But, um, no, I, I mean, you hit it on the head. It, for, first of all, start with resources. I mean, that, that, like that's a big, big part of – of recruiting. It's a big, big part of what you sell, right? I mean, if, if we're going to agree that we're in an arms race now in college athletics, well, then how does a place like Gonzaga survive? I think Mark early on embraced uh, who he was going to be able to recruit. So they've relied a lot on foreign players. They're right there on the West Coast. He's done a nice job established, and he's hired the right staff to be able to access and leverage relationships uh, overseas. Um, they've gotten lucky with some guys, but he's also gotten grown guys into that program, you, you know, and they've developed a reputation. I will also say this, the NCAA tournament, it, it helps programs like that. Definitely. Where, whereas college football, it's a four team tournament and you're never going to have one of these mid majors or whatever they call them, you know, group of five teams. They're never going to be in there in a four team tournament. Well, the NCAA tournament, even though he hasn't won it, it allows a program like Gonzaga to be on the stage, you know, every March and to be able to do what it does. Here's the other thing. For all of these schools that want to fire their coaches after two or three years, the fact that he has been there 22 seasons as the head coach, and then he was the assistant before that for Dan Munson, the fact that you've had that continuity – it helps a program like that because identification these days is not just the brand, but it's the coach. Yeah. So the fact that he's been there as long as he has, has also afforded him the opportunity to build it. I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's so funny. You mentioned some of those tournament teams. I think of Brandon Clark immediately, Roy Hachimura, who's here in DC. Like I remember Wizards fans being like, who's this guy? And I'm like, wait, Gonzaga, Mark Few, the kid has great size and he's been taught how to play basketball at, at a high level. If you'd like to hear more from Chris Spatola, check out the full version of Buckets, Boards, and Blocks from Pure Hoops Media. You can also see the video version of the BBB Quick Hitter on the Pure Hoops Media YouTube channel.